You ready, Maggie? Uh, recall, energy we defined as the ability to do what? Okay. And energy is measured in joules, and work is measured in joules, so it suggests that they should be linked somehow. Here is what links them. This is called the work energy theorem, and it says this. First of all, work is force times distance, and coal, that's always my first attempt, my first go-to, my first, oh, how much work? Work is also the area underneath a force versus distance graph. That's my second go-to, but it's pretty obvious because they gave me a graph. If they didn't give me a graph, pfft. The third, more cumbersome but much more useful definition of work. Work equals triangle KE plus triangle PE. Wait a minute. Not triangle. How would I say that as a science nerd? Well, delta is what the letter is. But even in English, though, I wouldn't even read delta. What does that delta mean? Change in. And what's change in anything? So let's make a little note here. Delta equals change in, and that's going to be final minus initial. Starting to see why I planted those seeds earlier this year? <clears throat> okay. And where do we use this? Let's just jump right on in. Rihanna, what's example one asking me to find? How much what? Yeah. Work. Okay, so don't write this down. The first thing that my brain would say is, well, work equals, don't write this down, force times distance. Read the question, do you see a force in Newtons? No. Do you see a distance in meters? You see a distance in meters, Cole? No. Okay, my brain would... I, I, I've written it down. I wouldn't even bother writing it down, but it's the first on my checklist. Work, force times distance. Nuh-uh. Work is also the area underneath a force versus distance graph. Did they give me a graph? Nuh-uh. But this is your now three-step checklist anytime you see work. What's our new definition of work? Write this down. Work equals the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Mr. Duick, you wrote change in kinetic plus change in potential. Order doesn't matter. It's change in plus change in. Uh, let's look at the change in potential. The change in potential, that means, I don't need to put an equal there. I can just say means a change in height. Does this question here as you read it, Rihanna, can you see any reference to a hill or a change in height or anything? So we are going to assume we're on flat level ground. What's change in anything? So work is going to be KE final minus KE initial. How do we calculate kinetic energy? Remember, there's a half. So this is going to end up being a half m v final squared plus a half m v initial squared. This is how much work, how much energy it will take. Yeah. Uh, minus, thank you. Y plus. Changing anything is minus. Thank you. Uh, Rihanna, is there an m in this term? Is there an M in this term? Uh, careful. Is there an M in the W? Say no. So here the M does not cancel. It takes more work for someone heavier to speed up than for someone lighter to speed up. That's why little kids can run around like crazy. It's because they're carrying so much little mass. They're not burning the same energy that you are running around to keep up with them. You may have noticed this if you've ever started babysitting like a five or a six-year-old. Holy smokes, right? Okay. Point five. 65. Rihanna, what's V final? Yep. Squared plus, oh, why can't I just write zero? Because what's V initial? From rest. Okay. I think I can do that in my head. 5 squared is 25. It's going to be half, uh, a little yucky. How many joules of energy will this take? Hmm? 
What'd you get? Sorry? 813. Anybody else? No? Yes? Now, this is an increase of 5 meters per second. How much does it take to increase by 5 meters per second? 813 joules of work. I notice B is an increase of 5 meters per second. Will it take the same amount? Will it also be 813 joules? This is where that square that you didn't realize existed really starts to explain an awful lot. Why, once you're moving fast, Brian, it's so much tougher to increase your speed at all. It takes way more energy, way more work. So let's find the same thing. It's going to be work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic Again, Brian, we can cancel out the change in potential. Brian, what's changing anything? So it's going to be a half mv final squared minus a half mv initial squared. It's going to be 0 0.5, 65, 10 squared minus 0.5, 65. By the way, I put a plus up here again, too, didn't I? Thank you, Emily. You were spotting that as well. It was a zero, so it didn't make a difference, but I caught myself. Uh, five squared. 2,439? I might be way off. Double check me. Two. Was this 813 rounded off? Oh, what was it exactly? Oh, well, geez, I thought that was exact. Okay, fine. Uh, what'd you get? 2437.5 joules. I know going from 0 to 5 and 5 to 10, it's about three times bigger. To go from 0 to 10, it's four times bigger because of the squared. Th anyways, so I used a bit of a shortcut there. What about to increase from five, from 10 to 15? Let's see if we can go straight to the plug and chug stage. I think it's going to be, Chloe, a half times 65 times 15 squared minus a half times 65 times 10 squared. Point five times sixty five times fifteen squared minus point five times sixty five times ten squared. Do you get four thousand sixty two point five? I'll call it four thousand sixty. Really should only go to two sig figs. In fact, technically ten. How many sig figs is ten? Not two. Uh, technically one, but and we'll review some of that as we get closer. Okay. Example two, a model rocket reaches a height of 340 meters when launched. If the top speed of the rocket is 85 meters per second, how much work does the rocket engine do on the rocket? Or how much chemical energy do we need to store in this rocket engine to achieve this? Because this is really what you now we're doing a little rocket science here. This is what you'd be designing. Okay. Maggie, what's this question asking me to find? So my first thought, don't write this down, don't write this down. My first thought would be work equals force times distance. Do you see a force? Well, I could say maybe mg and I see a distance, but wait a minute. I see some kinetic speed, some kinetic energy as well, and I don't see a graph. I'm going to use change in potential plus change in kinetic. Here it's plus, and then in the change in, it's minus. Okay. This is going to become, how do I calculate potential energy? So it's going to be mgh final minus mgh initial plus a half mv final squared minus a half mv initial squared. Are any of these zeros? Let's look at our heights. Is our height ever zero? Uh, initial. 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 Yeah, in fact, if I was really clever, I could have even skipped writing that and just gone straight to MGH final. 
What about our speeds? Is our speed ever zero? Oh, launch speed, right? Like on the on the launch pad. Okay. This is how much energy it would take to put this rocket off of the ground. This is how much chemical energy you would need to store. Now, in real life, we're still ignoring air resistance because that's just a really complicated thing to deal with. Although we also try and build model rockets pretty aerodynamic. It's going to be 0.15 times 9.8 times 340 plus 0.15, sorry, 0.5 times 0.15 times 85 squared. What's the minimum amount of energy this rocket engine needs to have? Also, you lose a lot to heat. Rocket engines are quite hot. That wasted energy. You get uh, 1,041 point that? No, am I wrong? 0.15 times 9.8 times 3 plus a half. Yeah, I'm right, am I not? Oh, nobody nodded, okay. I'll go 1,040 joules. Okay. Example three, a car is traveling at 35 meters per second. Hannah, what's A asking me to find? So don't write this down. First thing I would think is work equals force times distance. Hannah, do you see a force given us in this question or a distance? Well, Hannah, work is also the area underneath a force versus distance graph. Do you see a graph here? Do you see anything? Because you're looking pretty tired. Okay. So let's use our work energy theorem. It's going to be the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Now the change in potential, that occurs when we are gaining or losing height. I'm looking at this question. I don't see any hint of a hill. So I'm going to do that. What's change in anything? So it's going to be a half m v final squared minus a half m v initial squared. It's going to be 0 0.5, 1250. Oh, wait a minute. Hannah, are any of these zero? Ooh, I can do that. This is a little unusual. I'll get negative 0 0.5, 1250, 35 squared. I'm going to get a negative answer. What's the negative answer telling me? The car has to lose energy to stop. Because the energy's got to go somewhere. Car has to lose this energy to come to a stop. So I'm not actually surprised, May, with that negative. That actually makes sense to me. Yeah, for a car to slow down, to lose kinetic energy, it's got to do negative work. It's got to lose energy. That's what we said negative work was. So we're going to get negative 0.5 times 1250 times 35 squared. Hannah, do you get negative 765, 625? I'm going to write the whole thing down because I'm going to use this again. Cool. Brian, what's B want me to find? What's up? What? What else did they give me? What did we find in part A? It'd be cool if there was an equation that maybe had force and distance and work in it. Oh, <gasps> there is. Yes? Can you take that equation and get the force by itself, please? What can I write? F equals? Ah. Okay. And we're working our way up, no pun intended, to a promise that I made to you, I think, right around Halloween. Let's see if you recognize it in a little bit. That's going to be negative 6765625 divided by 82. 
You get negative 9336, uh, that there. I'll go negative 9340, but I'll keep this on my calculator. Negative 9340. Uh, Brian, units for force. Yes. What's with the negative? It's telling you that if the car is moving forwards, the force has to be pointing backwards. Which in a Captain Obvious, oh yeah, the force and the distance have to be in the opposite direction this time. So I'm okay, I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, there's a second part. The second part asks, what's creating the force? What force makes the car stop? I heard it. Thought I heard it there. Yeah, friction. That's why cars don't stop well on ice. So now, let's suppose we're a race car pit team, and these are the numbers we have to work with. We're trying to pick the right type of tire. What? Tristan, what's C asking me to find? Hey, what's mu? I don't know. What's me with you? What's mu? What did I find in part B? Which force? <gasps> And what's C asking me to find? But is there an equation that has force and a mu in it? A force of friction and mu in it. There it is. Got to go ways back, yeah? What was the equation? Friction is what times what? C. So this is friction equals mu times the normal force. And you've just told me that it's asked me to find mu, the minimum coefficient of friction. How would I get the mu by itself? How will I move that Fn over? You are correct, my friend. So now I'm going to write the whole number. Uh, negative, well, I'm going to ditch the negative. Now I'm going to ignore the negative because mu is a scalar. So I'm going to go 9336.9. Divided by, I don't know the normal force. This is a job for a free body diagram. There's the car. What are the forces acting on this car? Get the obvious one. Maybe has nothing to do with what he says right now. Did you hit gravity? Oh, it wasn't you? I thought it was you. Okay. Gravity. Which we typically calculated as mg. By the way, what was another word for gravity? Began with the letter W. The force of gravity began with the letter W. No now. No now. Wait. No now. Okay. Remember all the dumb. The, some of the dumb jokes had good reasons to help you remember things. Okay, so I can also call that weight. Weight is measured in newtons, not in kilograms. Uh, is this car sinking around like quicksand? Is it flying like Superman? So there has to be a force pointing up to the same size. What did we call that force there? Normal force, normally. What else? Friction pointing which way? Oh, because friction is slowing it down. The car is moving forwards. Doesn't there have to be a force pointing forwards then? Yeah? Okay. What's that one? Or does there have to be a force there? Doesn't have to be a force there. That works. We can be moving forwards. Which way is the car accelerating? Does that free body diagram give you a net force backward? Yeah, that's a common mistake. I'm glad you made it. And I saw about 10 people, as soon as you said that, they drew a little arrow pointing forward. No, no. The car is moving forwards with its own velocity and inertia, but the force is acting backwards. Okay, back to you. Normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. Another force the same size as the normal force. Which one? Yes. So I got this number stored on my calculator divided by bracket. I've scrolled down. What was the mass, Tristan? What's G? Hopefully you have this memorized by now. Yeah. 
And again, I did put G on your formula sheet, but that's one if kids are looking up. I always get a little worried. Um, oh, ignore the negative. 0.762. What were the units for the coefficient of friction? Oh, there weren't any. Yeah, no units. Because it's newtons divided by newtons, which would cancel. Cool. Turn the page. A long, long time ago, I did this question with you, I think right around Halloween, except I had to have this unique convenience. I had the cell phone record the time of the, uh, the squealing tires of the skid on someone's voicemail, which is really stupid, as if it would ever happen. So now we can go full bore. There's been a car accident. You're an RCMP officer. The car is struck a pedestrian at a school crosswalk. There are no witnesses. No convenient cell phone that recorded how long the skid lasted. The officer goes out to the site, and they do have a special device that lets them just measure the coefficient of friction. So he measures mu to be 0 0.65. It was a nice dry day. And he measures skid marks that are 49 meters long. Can we press charges? Hmm. Hmm. We want to. F what do we want to find here? If we want to press charges, what are we interested in figuring out? How fast? Uh, initial or final? What's final velocity of every car accident ever? Zero. So I want to find VI. With me so far? Okay. I think this is a job for the work energy theorem. So I'd like you to start out by going like this. Work equals work. I know that sounds silly. What's one way to calculate work? What's another way to calculate work? Uh, a graph. No graph here. What's our today work energy theorem? Are both of those work? Then that's a legitimate new equation. Uh, this question mentioned a hill at all? <coughs> okay. I'm going to get force times distance equals a half m v final squared minus a half m v initial squared. Why can't I do this? Oh, v final is zero. What did we say we're trying to find? Hey. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. Let's look over here. Which distance? Which distance? Which distance? 49? Is that meters? Then which force goes along with that distance? What causes the skidding? Ah, let's put a little uh, force of friction times distance right there. Okay, 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 okay. I see where we're going. Tristan, friction is what times what? Now, on the previous line, right here, you can make a little note. Chuck the negative. Uh, this force is in the opposite direction of distance, and so it's also negative. I know that the speed is moving forwards and is positive, so I'm going to lose the negative sign here. It's really a minus minus becoming a plus. Okay. Uh, by the way, I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 because this is a free body diagram for an object coming to a stop due to friction, is it not? I know the force same size as a normal force. Okay, so we can say this then. Mu mg d equals 
five M Hey. Right? Is there an M in everything? So this would work for a little Austin Mini Cooper that was in a car accident or a big moving van that was in a car accident. Okay. What am I trying to find? How do I get the V by itself? Now, I'm going to do this. Look up, folks. Instead of a 0.5, I'm going to temporarily replace it with a 1 half because I want to get the V by itself. How would I move this 1 over? Who cares? It's a 1. How will I move this 2 on the bottom over? We've seen this before. Dividing by 2 is the same as what? Over here? Timesing by 2, and that's going to give me a V squared. Square root. So you would either get this. If you had it written the first way, you would get... Uh, mu g d over 0.5 or you would have 2 mu g d. Those two equations are identical because Joel dividing by 0.5 and times it by 2, same diff. But I did promise you at the very beginning of the year that we would revisit this question and finally be able to do it without the convenient fluke of a cell phone recording. Two, we found mu to be 0.65. Now, if it was rainy, that number would be lower, and it would take you uh, longer to stop. And or it, if you did stop in that distance, you must have been traveling slower. So this actually, yeah, this works in the quote unquote real world. Uh, Tristan G, good. What was the distance I've scrolled down? 49. Now, this is the minimum speed because it's possible, Nick, the driver could have slowed down before skidding, especially if they got ABS. So this is minimum speed. What do you get? What did you get? Sorry? 25 meters per second? Uh, which is what in kilometers per hour? 90 in a school zone? You, you could probably legitimately charge this person with vehicular manslaughter and then probably plead them down to a lesser charge but yeah there's not much that this person could claim to say there's no way I was speeding because even if our numbers are off that's I mean a massive room for error and still clearly speeding in a school zone is that okay is it 25 yeah uh-oh, that fell apart. Oh, man. Put your pencils down. Look up. Got a video of a motorcycle here. I hope I do. I hope I haven't lost it. I'm suddenly wondering if I deleted it, but I think I have it. We're going to have to make an assumption. I googled the brand of bike and made a rough guess as to the mass of the rider. We're going to assume M is around 300 kilograms, although maybe if we're lucky, M will cancel and we'll be okay anyways, but let's find out. Um, what was VI 350 miles per hour oh kilometers per hour sorry right how do we convert that to meters per second was it yeah. May 22nd, June 11th. Well, that was dumb. Phone started playing something. And then it came down to 100 miles per hour, which is uh, somewhere. We'll have to use some conversions. Uh, 350 kilometers per hour is what? Somebody divide by 3.6? 97.2. Since we're doing really rough, 100 meters per second ish. The reason I got my phone out is convert 100 miles per hour to meters per second. 100 miles per hour equals 44.704 meters per second. 
Call it 45, V final. Okay. First thing I'd like to find is how much work was done in stopping the bike. I'm not using force times distance, I'm using the work energy theorem, which is the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. That track, Christian, was definitely level, or that stretch of road. So it's going to be a half m v final squared minus a half m v initial squared. Point 0.5, we're assuming a mass of 300. V final, 45 squared minus point 0.5, 300, 100 squared ish. Negative because I'm losing energy. Do you get one one nine six two fifty joules? Where'd that energy go? Yeah, it's a lot of heat. His brakes are, are very hot or warming up. So my next question is what did you get for the time? Those of you that timed it, what'd you get? 15.8, 15 15.7, 15. 15. So let's go 15-ish, so yeah, 15 seconds. How many watts of power? How do I calculate power? Power is measured in watt, watts. How do I calculate power? <coughs> How do I calculate power? Oh, power is work. So if I, over time, so if I take this 1, 1, I'm going to ignore the negative. I know we're losing energy. 1, 1, 9, 6, 2, 50, divided by around 15 seconds, 16 seconds, not that big a difference. So I'm going to ignore the negative on my calculator. Do you get right around 80,000 watts of power? Approximately. Or divide by 60, uh, enough to run about one and a half thousand light bulbs. One of the reasons uh, hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles are so much more energy efficient is rather than that energy being lost to heat, they're taking that energy and they're using it to recharge the batteries. It's called regenerative braking. It's done quite cleverly. pick up with this one next class. I'll give you some homework to start now, and you got a take-home quiz. So this is the work energy theorem. You can do number one. You can do number two. You can do number three. Wow, lots of graphy questions. The rest of these are all graph questions. So your homework right now is one, two, and three in the take-home quiz.